G'day everybody, Andrew Maher here. Welcome to The Blueprint, coming to you live at 1pm every Tuesday here and available on demand at the carltonfc.com.au website. Of course, it's a huge day for the club with the skipper set to face the tribunal tonight and joining us on the show in a minute is one of the men in the centre of it all, Carlton head of football, Andrew McKay. If you want to get involved in today's show, and I'm sure a lot of you probably do, remember you can send in your questions and comments via Twitter, hashtag it, the blueprint, as we welcome once again former champion of the club, Mark McClure. A heap to get through today, Sellers. Great to see you before we get to Macca. Um, let's talk about the issue of the day, Chris Judd. Um, what have you made of the events on Friday night and the conversation that's taken place since? Well, I was there live and I saw it live and uh, I actually didn't realise how bad it was until I actually watched it on TV. And it wasn't as bad when I actually, when I look at it now. Um, I, I think it was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Mm. I don't understand why anyone would do it. And, we all, and I think Juddy thinks that too. And uh, I, I was sort of knocked back. But is it bringing the game into disrepute? Has he killed anybody? Has he, uh, has he broken a bone? This guy will play next week. Um, the, he probably went off the ground. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, but he came back on and played. Uh, I'm not trying to defend Juddy, but he hasn't actually done anything dastardly wrong besides be a bit, you know, like uh, a mischievous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and, and you're on the view that he should get... You're not saying he shouldn't do time for No, he'll it, get though. time. Yeah. And he should do time. But he hasn't brought the game into disrepute, I can assure you of that. And I want to ask Andrew about that straight away. I mean, uh, what well, do you think about that? Well, welcome to you, Macca, too, by the way. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good to be here. It's a, uh, obviously a bit of a, a polarising event, the uh, Chris Judd report. But certainly, you know, we don't believe he's brought the game into disrepute. He's been charged with misconduct, yep. which is a very broad charge. Um, if you get charged with rough conduct, it's easier to um, grade. And mm. if you get charged with misconduct, they actually don't grade it until they're asked to grade it. So we're in um, talking to the AFL at the moment to get them to get a bit of an understanding on how they're going to grade it. And that'll give us a bit of a guide on how we attack it tonight, whether we plead guilty or uh, we don't plead guilty. But certainly it, it is interesting that uh, you know, comments have been made uh, through the media uh, the AFL made by, that the, by the AFL to say that it's brought the game in disrepute, um, which is... Which is disappointing, considering we're not allowed to comment on it. Well, they're making comments before the tribunal here. Yeah, he hasn't been found guilty of anything yet. Yeah. You can't possibly be thinking that there could be any grounds for a not guilty plea, though, could you? I mean, under what circumstances might you deem that a possibility? Oh, I'll get more into the technical lawyer talk yeah. for that to happen. Yeah. Um, certainly, uh, to give you the heads up, Chris is... Um, he's certainly uh, very remorseful for the actual result. He had no intention of doing... Um, of hurting, of, of hurting yeah, him at yeah. all. So, uh, you know, we just need to uh, go through the correct procedure and, and process and yeah. see, what, see what's dealt up tonight. Have you spoken to him about what was going through his mind at the time? Yeah, and he actually, um, he's not that clear on it, to be honest. So it's just a bit of a blur and yeah. it happened and you see the vision and it looks horrific. It doesn't look horrific, but it, looks, it doesn't look good. It, it, the result doesn't look good, but mm. uh, I, I think if you watch the vision carefully, he's actually trying to... Well, I won't comment too yeah, much no, on it, enough. but um, yeah. I think he's initially going for the ball and then holding his arm and he went to ground. So, One of your assistant coaches uh, spoke on the weekend on a radio station and said he was trying to stop you from handballing the ball. Yeah, well, quite possibly. Um, that's well, certainly a... I reckon that's a load of rubbish. I mean, and seriously, I thought that that was a very poor excuse to come up from one of your assistants. Yeah, I mean, as I said... Really, I can't. I don't want to get into any detail because yeah. uh, you know we're really not allowed to comment on it publicly, and it, we don't want to um, certainly influence the yeah. tribunal anyway. Fair enough. Well, that's at one o'clock, and you're second up at the tribunal tonight. So, depending on how Daniel Merritt's case goes, we'll be sort of getting into the nitty gritty of it all probably by about six or six thirty yeah, tonight, I, I suppose. Yep. Can I ask um, you a couple of questions about the game? Can we get on to that? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, I think we need to. Talk I think. Footy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's yeah. talk footy. I agree with you. <laughs> uh, what was the selection criteria prior to the game? You, you won against Collingwood. It's a terrific win. Um, you went into the game with a similar type setup. What was the actual formula to going in that way? Yeah, well, certainly, as you mentioned, against Collingwood, we had a good result there. And we had, a, um, I suppose, a little bit of a surprise for Collingwood. And we put Dargan forward. We really wanted to um, have a real competitor in that forward mm. line. Um, you know, we've got uh, other players in there, but half of them are of smaller body type. I've um, got Walker using his legs up and down the ground, but we mm. wanted to really put the asset on Maxwell, because he it was really That's important with, with the, the, mm. their team structure, and it worked quite well. Yeah, so we thought, let's go into the North game with the same mindset, um, put the heat on one or two of their main forwards, hopefully try and intercept Petries and, and, and dampen his influence, which actually didn't 
uh, seem to have too much influence, no. but uh, nonetheless, we, so we put uh, Henderson up forward. He's played junior footy up yep. forward. He mm. did uh, played up forward for Brisbane a few times, and he actually was getting hold of the ball a lot in that first quarter. Um, the only thing was we weren't scoring. Mm. We were kicking points. They were kicking goals every time we went down there. We got a couple of 50-meter penalties uh, against us, which I think we had two to get two of their first three goals, mm. which uh, was disappointing. So Petra is having more influence. So then what do we do? We're down on size, so we ended up putting Lockie from uh, full forward to full back to uh, dampen Petra's influence. Yeah, but that was at the 15 or 16 minute mark of the first quarter. Uh, I mean, the game was not shot then. I mean, I, I, I can't understand why he didn't stick with Jamison. Jamison was, is a seasoned player. He's one of your leadership group. He's one of your star defenders. And all, all of a sudden, Petra kicks a couple on him. You've got to muscle up and say, hey, listen, son, you need to hang on to this bloke mm. because your structure was de just defeated already with Henderson going back. Yeah, it's a good point. But we, se we certainly, the message did go out to Jamo, so, you know, Tighten up, don't give away 50s and really got to control this guy, otherwise it will influence the structure down the other end. Is he playing? He, he's continued to get some marks on the lead, outrunning him, so we mm. thought, well, let's make the change now before trying to try stem the bleeding. Yeah, I don't want to deal by any internal secrets, but is Jamison playing under some duress at the moment? No, he's all right. He's okay. Yeah, he's okay. What about Matty Cruiser? It was the week before we see Cruiser play the way we all hope that Matthew Cruiser is going to play against Collingwood. On the weekend, he started okay, but then it just seemed to. At times, he just seemed to be labouring a little bit. I don't know whether I've seen it the way other people were. I'm told that he's got issues with his hip or hips, and that's going to be an ongoing thing. And I'm told that he can't play sort of more than four or five games in a row without his body starting to sort of seize up. And is he got that, a, he is got any hit, of that true? He got a hit on the hip in the Collingwood game. Yep. Um, so he, 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 might, he probably went into the game a little bit sore, but, it, you know, fine to run out the game. Um, as you said, he did a great job against Collingwood. It's yep. interesting that it was a, the first game for a long time that we actually said to him, right, Cruz, you're going out there, you're playing 95% of the game time, you've got no backup. Yeah, yeah. Put say, say that seed in his mind right from the word go, and then it's amazing what you can get out of him. Yeah. Did the same thing into the um, North game. Said, Cruz, you're not going to get much help. You know, you might get a bit of help from um, Watson and, that, and the like, um, but you're not going to get a lot of help. You've got to grind it out. Um, so whether it was a bit of him saving himself as well, whether the hip played up a little bit, but certainly on the injury front, um, you know, Ruckman pull up sore after every game, yeah. um, and so, you know, he's often sore until late in the week. We rest him pretty much until later in the week, mm -hmm. hit him up with the last one or two uh, training sessions, then usually he's ready to go. The game wasn't uh, was played. Actually, you had more of the ball. You had 50 more possessions than they did. 15 more tackles than they did. 26 more marks than they did, and we got beat by 10 goals. Nearly 10 goals. The use of the ball was atrocious. The use of the ball was uh, yeah, not what we're after. That's for sure. And, and it's amazing because you can't lose that skill in a week. You know, no. we, we played, we disposed of it quite well against Collingwood, and yet then we turned up and played North and the and the skills weren't as good as they need to be. Certainly um, players were running to the wrong spots as well, um, and we've certainly addressed that during the week, so hopefully that's going to be a big improvement for this week. I don't know whether it's the Western Bulldogs. Mathematically, we're still in the mix, and you're still a chance of playing finals footy, and that's great, and that needs to be the stated ambition for as long as you can. But you know, a lot of Carlton supporters are already looking beyond 2012 now, wondering whether it's time to start injecting some youth into the side now. There might be a couple. There's going to be a couple of changes this week at least. Yeah, um, you'd think there'd be. Well, certainly Andrew Walker got injured on the weekend. Yep. Uh, Andrew Joseph copped a uh, hit. I think he'll be OK. Zach Twee uh, withdrew from the game early before it started um, with a stiff back. Uh, that's that's uh, going OK. It's still a little bit stiff, but it should be OK for the game. So certainly you'd think there'd be one or two changes. And Andrew McGuinness has been Toronto. Yeah, I think everyone thinks he's done a really good job. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Who's yeah. The next, who are the next couple to come in? Are there a couple that we want to, the club wants to get a look at before the season's out? Well, we've, we've tried Bootsma, yep. um, given him a good go, and he, uh, he did, he's done quite well. Um, we tried him earlier in the season, and often you find that these young guys come in, you try them early, give them you know, three or four games, they Almost, they start well and almost taper off because mm. they, they get more tired as the season goes on. It was interesting, we took him to Perth against uh, West Coast as an emergency and we didn't end up playing him. And speaking to his dad that, that day, um, he said, well, exactly a year ago he came up from Albany to play twos for um, the Waffle. Yeah, right. Or Colts for the Waffle. Yeah. The, the year before, that, you know, 12 months before he was playing... Uh, in his local country town. Tell me about player development. Uh, you talked about playing players for three and four weeks. Sometimes that hasn't happened yeah. due to injuries and bits and other yeah, pieces. Right. But 
uh, is that part of the criteria that what you want to do going forward, like play three to four weeks, one kid? Watson's been in four weeks. Watson's been in four weeks, and yep. he's done a pretty good job. Very good. Um, you know, and, and he didn't come off great form in the VFL, no. to be honest, either. So uh, it was almost, well, he almost forced our hand, or the, the injuries almost forced our hand. We needed someone tall. A tall defender, but, so he's done quite well. But you've seen the benefit of that. For yeah, four weeks, right. he's getting better, he's getting more confident. Yeah, that's Sometimes right. taking him in and putting him out, and I think I've seen a bit of that this year, it wrecks their confidence completely. Yeah, it, it, it certainly doesn't help, that's for no. sure. Um, you know, people like uh, Lucas and, and, the, and the like that come in for one game, then out for a game. Collins has been a little bit the same. Uh, in for a game, out for a game, so, so, even starting sub, yeah. not knowing when you're going to go on, it can't be <laughs> really all that beneficial for your mindset when you're trying to play a game of footy. It sounds like it's been a juggling act all year for you. But yes, yeah, you know, really? people will get injured and then yeah. others will come back and it, it is, has been a bit of a jug juggling act. Why did you change from being a vet to go into football. <laughs> Can you give us some idea about this? Well, I love working with animals, so nothing's it's changed. Really? So, uh, <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, to be honest, uh, it's an exciting industry. It's a, it's a damn ruthless industry, mm, mm. Um, as we all know. Um, but it's an ex exciting industry. And, you know, really Carlton uh, have got a lot of potential to fulfil what we always want yeah. to fulfil, yeah. you know, to, to get success. So, you now that was uh, the whole crux of me coming in. Help, help them out. Rats have been asking me for a few years to help out, and I thought, well, now, now's the right time. I've, I'm, uh, I'm ready to jump into the footy full on. How can you lose confidence from playing against Collingwood, the MCG, one week to come back? This is a really interesting question, how you can come here. And the people out there must know, want to find out, to come to North Melbourne the week after, contender, chance to make the eight and go completely upside down. Yeah, I, I don't think we started upside down. We certainly started OK and we controlled the ball a reasonable amount early. Every time North got the ball in their hands, they ended up kicking a goal, mm. which uh, was disappointing. It, it, it seemed to, uh, this transition seemed to be a little bit too easy. As that goes on, then I think the boys lose confidence and, you, and you, you know, the players will run for the 45 degree kicks or the, or the triangle kicks out the back. And, it, and then if the, the kicker loses a little bit of confidence, they don't try those yeah. kicks and then they'll go down the line. So then they, those opportunities don't present themselves. So then but the game closes down a bit. They lost their dare. It's easy to do. Yeah, and it's easy to do. You no, know, we've been trying to instill in the guys to play bold footy. You know, yeah. take them on, take them on, take on those 45 degree kicks. You know, you mentioned Diagon before the show. You know, he, he missed one. So he's, you miss one of those, you think, oh, gee. Then you hesitate the next one. And if you hesitate for the next one, often it's that option's closed down by the time you realise you should go there. One of the things we do here at the uh, Blueprint, Macca, is give Carlton supporters the opportunity to get in contact with you and chat with you after the show. And we're doing that again today on the Google Plus Hangout where Carlton supporters get the opportunity to talk to you about the issues that we're talking about as well. We always ask people to get involved as well. Hashtag the Blueprint. Time for some viewer questions. Macca, we've had plenty of emails and tweets come through. Adrian is asking, can you please ask Andrew the justification behind signing Rob Warnock to a three-year deal with Cruiser and Hampson already established on the list? What yeah, it's a good question. Um, obviously, Robbie's a, a valuable player for us. Great tap, Ruckman. Um, there's a, there's a, 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 new, it, a new club up in interest, uh, Sydney yeah. uh, that need a good tap, Ruckman, um, and they still are able to get uncontracted players. So they, they can get an uncontracted player for... For nothing. For, for really basically nothing. Yep. So it would be negligent not to sign him just in case they were going to pinch him. Yep. Uh, we put the question out there about what type of player we should be targeting in 2013 and Blue Gunners reckons one with a law degree. That might come in handy tonight, I reckon. On a more serious note, however, Bick says an inside midfielder, Josh Caddy, comes to mind, centre-half forward or half-back, and he suggests maybe the young McKernan from Adelaide. Do you have in mind... A type of play. When you look at the list now, uh, do you have a, a, something in mind where there, there is a glaring hole that needs to be filled? Well, we've got a lot of tall forwards, but they're all injured. Um, it's slowly coming back now with Kaz Bolt and White and Sam Rose obviously out for the mm. season. Mm. Um, we still probably need a, another power forward mm. and we probably need an a inside mid. Um, and I think if you ask... 16 or 17 or 18 of the 18 clubs, they'd probably the say thing. the same, to be honest. <laughs> yep. um, so they're, they're valuable players in any team. Have we got the capacity to be aggressive? There's always capacity yeah, to be aggressive. Yeah, we can make it happen. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, that's just about it from the Blueprint today. We have been getting a lot of viewer feedback, however, and we appreciate it all. Hashtag the Blueprint. 
And we've had one from uh, Clinton in North Bourne has sent through a lookalike. We had great success with a lookalike last week. And this oh, has come John. through uh, oh, the Macca. Yeah. Oh, Sellers with the Larry glasses mm. uh, looking a lot like the bloke on the left. Yeah, you kiss yeah. one bloke and you're labelled for life. <laughs> Do we see any similarity? Mate, there's a lot of other stuff that we could have spoken to you about and everyone gets the opportunity to do that in the Google Plus Hangout a bit later on. Uh, hopefully it's not the last time we get to talk to you on the Blueprint. No. We appreciate it. And good luck tonight. It's going to be in- interesting to see how that one plays itself out. Yeah, thanks for Just one, right. just on that, if you were on the match review panel, as you were in a previous lifetime, do you, would you have sent this one straight to the tribunal? It's an interesting one because he was charged on the day with misconduct. Yep. And the mis- there's, no, there's other misconducts with... Uh, spitting and stomping and things like that, but it didn't really fit into one of those misconducts. So it, it's an interesting question. Could they have gone down the rough conduct style, for example? If, if, you know, an attack or a sling tackle, that's considered rough conduct. Mm. This is uh, what we would consider a tackle, in a tackle, so uh, they could have gone down a rough conduct. Before we go, we're glad to have you back at the Blues. Yeah, absolutely. It's thanks good. very much, You're guys. Good man. Uh, thanks, sellers, and thanks to Andrew McKay for coming on The Blueprint. We'll see you next week and next Tuesday, of course, from 1pm right here, carltonfc.com.au. Until then, see you later.